Hi, this is Inky35, and I'm going to continue from uh, my Rising of New Dawn series from the last one called Origins of Man, Where, where Do We Come From? Um, I was come to an abrupt halt on that because it reached the 15 minute mark, but I'm going to go ahead and start where I left off on there where I was speaking about um, that there's no doubt that we actually come from the Near East. When you look at the uplands and mountain ranges that extend in the semi-arc of the Zagros Mountains, and in the east where present-day Iran and Iraq border on each other, through the Ararat and Taurus ranges in the north, then down westward and southward to the hill lands of Syria, Lebanon, and Israel, they are replete with caves where there's evidence of prehistoric but modern man has been preserved and on these caves um, Shanidar is located in the northeastern part of the semi-arc of civilization and so nowadays fierce Kurdish men tribesmen seek shelter in the area's caves for themselves and their flocks during the cold winter months so they're you know they use those caves today but scientists had found that about 44,000 years ago that there was a family of nine that even had a baby sought shelter in the cave of Shanidar. And I don't know if a lot of people have heard this, but if they look, look it up, they'll be able to find these, you know, remains that were found. And so these remains that they found were evidently crushed to death by rockfall which were discovered in 1957 by Ralph uh, Selecki. And then he had gone into the area in search of the evidence of early man. And what he found was uh, more than he had expected. And as layer upon layer of debris was removed, it became apparent that the cave preserved a clear record of man's habitation in the area from about 100,000 to some 13,000 years ago. This is really amazing because people were supposed to be in one origin and place on the earth, but here are these civilizations which actually, you know, are around the Zagros Mountains area. And, and I'm going to get into all this where they had cereals and grains that were just perfect for humans to have and consume. It's like, how did they even know how to grow this stuff, right? So with this record, of them finding uh, them 100 to some 13,000 years ago. This record showed, uh, was as surprising as the find itself, that man's culture has shown not a progression, but a regression. And starting from a certain standard, the following generations showed that not more advanced, but less advanced standards of civilized life. And so from about 27,000 BC to 11,000 BC, the regressing and dwindling population reached the point of an almost complete absence of habitation. And um, so for this reason, it's assumed to have been climatic and man was almost completely gone from the whole area for some 16,000 years. And then in circa 11,000 BC, thinking man appeared with new vigor and on a higher cultural level and so it was as if some unseen force or coach or being was watching the faltering human game and then dispatched to the field a fresh and better trained team to take over from the exhausted one and throughout the many millions of years of man's endless beginning. Man was nature's child. And he subsisted by gathering the foods that he grew, or that grew wild. And he also hunted wild animals and by catching wild birds and fishes. But just as man's settlements were thinning out, and just as he was abandoning his abodes, when his material and artistic achievements were disappearing, just then, suddenly, with no apparent reason and without any prior known period of gradual preparation, man became a farmer. So all of a sudden, 
just out of nowhere, they are starting to farm, and they just know how to, you know, agriculture. All of a sudden, they, they know how to plant farms and grow foods and know what it's good for and, and know all about the scientific uh, perplexities of these seeds and how to do it. I mean, it's just amazing. All of a sudden, they know how to do this. And so summarizing the work of many eminent authorities on the subject, R.J. Braidwood and B. Howe, um, prehistoric investigations in Iraqi Kurdistan stated or concluded that genetic studies confirm the archaeological finds and leave no doubt that agriculture began exactly where thinking man had emerged earlier with his first crude civilization in the Near East. And there is no doubt by now that agriculture spread all over the world from the Near Eastern arc of the mountains and highlands. And so employing sophisticated methods of radiocarbon dating and plant genetics, many scholars from various fields of science concur in the conclusion that man's first farming venture was the cultivation of wheat and barley, probably through the domestication of wild variety of emmer. But assuming that, somehow, man did undergo a gradual process of teaching himself how to domesticate, grow, and farm a wild plant. And scholars remain baffled by the profusion of other plants and cereals basic to human survival and the advancement that kept coming out of the Near East. And so these included, in rapid succession, millet, rye, and spelt among the edible cereals, flax, which provides fibers and, and edible oil, and a variety of fruit-bearing shrubs and trees. And so in every instance, the plant was undoubtedly domesticated in the Near East for millennia before it reached Europe. So it was as though the Near East were some kind of genetic botanical laboratory and guided by an unseen hand, producing every so often a newly domesticated plant. How did mankind just all of a sudden know this? Because I believe they were told how to do this. So the scholars that have studied the origins of the grapevine have concluded that its cultivation began in the mountains around northern Mesopotamia and in Syria and Palestine. And no wonder the Old Testament tells us that Noah planted a vineyard and even got drunk on its wine. And his ark rested on Mount Ararat as the waters of the deluge receded. And the Bible, like the scholars, thus places the start of vine cultivation in the mountains of northern Mesopotamia. And now isn't that really interesting? The Bible says that Noah had planted a vineyard. And then where the scholars actually find these vineyards and where they came from was after this major flood. And in the same area that the Bible claims that he landed on. I mean, this is just amazing. It's absolutely fantastic that scholars agree with what the Bible is saying, okay? And these are scientists. So we know that, that now that the grapevines actually existed there where Noah was supposedly supposed to have landed. So apples, pears, olives, figs, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, all originated in the Near East and spread from there to Europe and other parts of the world. So we cannot help recalling that the Old Testament preceded our scholars by several millennia in identifying the very same area as the world's first orchard. And the Lord planted an orchard in Eden in the east, and the Lord caused to grow out of the ground every tree that is pleasant to behold and that is good for eating. So, the general location of the Eden was certainly known to the biblical generations. It, it was actually in the east, 
east of the land of Israel. And it was a land watered by four major rivers, two of which the Tigris and the Euphrates there around that surrounding area is where it says, which is really interesting. So there can be no doubt that the book of Genesis located the first orchard in the highlands where these rivers originated in northern Mesopotamia. And so the Bible and science are in full agreement. And as a matter of fact, if we read the original Hebrew text of the book of Genesis, not as a theological, but as a scientific text, we find that it also accurately describes the process of plant domestication. And so science tells us that the process went from wild grasses to wild cereals to cultivated cereals, followed by fruit bearing shrubs and trees. And this is exactly the process detailed in the first chapter of the book of Genesis. And it says this, and the Lord said, let the earth bring forth grasses, cereals that by seeds produce seeds, fruit trees that bear fruit by species, which contain the seed within themselves. And it was so, and the earth brought forth grass, cereals that by seeds produce seed by species and trees that bear fruit which contain the seed within themselves by species. And so the book of Genesis goes on to tell us that man expelled from the orchard of Eden or the garden of Eden had to toil to grow his food. By the sweat of thy brow shalt thou eat bread, the Lord said to Adam. And it was after that that Abel was a keeper of herds and Cain was a tiller of the soil. So man, the Bible tells us, became a shepherd soon after he became a farmer. Isn't that interesting? That's, this is really, really interesting. I just love this. So scholars are in full agreement with the this biblical sequence of events analyzing the various theories regarding animal domestication F. E. Zuner domestication of animals stresses that man could not have acquired the habit of an keeping animals in captivity or domestication before he reached the stage of living in social units of some size and so such settlement communities a prerequisite of animal domestication followed the changeover to agriculture. So the first animal to be domesticated was the dog. And not necessarily as man's best friend, but probably also for food. And this, it is believed, took place in circa 9500 BC. And the first skeletal remains of dogs have been found in Iran, Iraq, and Israel. And sheep were domesticated about the same time and the Shanidar cave contains remains of sheep from circa 9000 BC, showing that a large part of each year's young were killed for food and skins. Goats, which also provided milk, soon followed, and pigs, horned cattle, and hornless cattle were next to be domesticated. So in every instance, we see that domestication had began in the Near East. This is going to conclude the um, first part of the Near East segment, and I'm going to go ahead and follow up directly with the second part of this in the Rising of a New Dawn series to complete what I'm talking to you about, the agriculture of man. I will talk with you soon. This is NQ35.